It only takes 10 to 15 seconds, a slip along the San Andreas Fault, the quake measuring 6.9 magnitude, to instigate the need for activating the Emergency Operations Center, or EOC. Well, if anybody knows the history of the Bay Area, we've suffered tragedies involving uh, major earthquakes, uh, disasters, all types of things where it's very important that we remain ready and well-educated and trained to respond to any of those types of disasters. An introduction to the Bay Area Just-in-Time Training Series for the Emergency Operations Center based on the Bay Area Regional Catastrophic Earthquake Plans. Well, I think just-in-time training, like any training, is important to prepare a person for the unknown. I think that oftentimes what happens is you're put into a seat, you're asked to do something, you don't have the faintest idea as to what you're going to do. Just-in-time training can help really eliminate a lot of fear when a person is in fact placed into that type of position. Just-in-time training is an excellent tool for someone who's brand new to the EOC. It provides a structure for them, and that structure is based on SIMS, which is Standardized Emergency Management System. It also shows the new person how to communicate within the EOC the protocols, the terminology, and the acronyms and that sort of thing, and also shows them what, who they have to speak with or want to speak with externally. Just-in-time trainings are not designed to make people a subject matter expert. They're designed as an orientation to the topic, a way to identify who key players are, what the key functions are, and where to get more information, and really to help them launch into their role that they are working in the EOC. These just-in-time training videos introduce the basic concepts for your role in an EOC to support specific areas of coordinated response. The topic areas of the eight Bay Area Catastrophic Earthquake Regional Plans are mass fatality, debris management, mass transportation and evacuation, mass care and shelter, interim housing, volunteer management and donations management, and the last plan is logistics and the restoration of critical lifelines which underlies all of those topics. These plans are designed to provide guidance for agency coordination in an EOC to support field response. I think the plans as they were written, you know, have components in them that address both lower level types of incidents as well as catastrophic incidents. Although written for catastrophic events, the plans take an all hazards approach and are scalable to all type of events that may impact the Bay Area. It's based in ICS, Incident Command System uh, Operations, and SEMS, Standardized Emergency Management Systems, which is regulated by the state of California, which also aligns with NIMS, which is the National Incident Management System, which is a federal regulation. Because of that, you take all the operations, they're standardized, and you can scale them up or down depending on what type of incident and how you need to respond to them. SIMS, or the Standardized Emergency Management System, was established after the Oakland Hills fire in 1991, where we had a lot of issues with multi-agency and multi-jurisdictional coordination, understanding what the roles and responsibilities are from the incident, to local government, to the county, to the region, to the state. So it really helped us hone down or define clearly what the roles and responsibilities are at the various levels of government. That is the beauty of the Standardized Emergency Management System, or SIMS. These just-in-time trainings illustrate your position in an EOC within both the SEMS and NIMS structures for unified operations. Whether or not you have worked in an EOC before, they will guide you to the necessary resources to help you be successful. While we each have a role in an emergency operations center, we really do and absolutely need to operate as a team. Each of us will be coming into a situation with a variety of experiences, whether it be great depth of many years or decades of experience or brand new in our role. And all of those circumstances are important and a natural part of working together as a team. We can learn from each other even from those of us who may not have been in that specific environment before. You know, you never know when a disaster is going to happen. If your skills levels can fall down, you might, if you go work in an EOC once, you might not go back in for two or three years for a major incident. So even at a refresher level, the just in time training can get your comfort level higher. It's critical that everybody knows how an EOC works. Uh, we often say in law enforcement and emergency management that the time to be exchanging business cards is not during the calamity. So during EOC management, you're actually talking on a first-time basis 
Everybody knows their role, and that's critical when we're in the fire. The good thing about the Emergency Operations Center, or what we call the EOC, is that we have manuals, we have checklists. So for each role within the EOC, all you need to do is go to that particular checklist, read it through before you start, and so that you understand what's expected of you and where to find things. The Just-In-Time training series will help you ask yourself key questions as you perform duties. What information do I have? What information should I gather? How do I get the right information to the right people? The Emergency Operations Center is key because it provides logistical support. It supports the broader area and the wide range of things that need to be done beyond just the incident responders, the first responders. It supports debris removal. It supports, you know, um, making sure that the highways are open and available for the transport of goods back and forth. It helps us bring uh, our systems back online, whether it's energy, phone, telecommunications, across the board. So it supports a lot of the infrastructure necessary to bring an area back up post-disaster. An emergency operations center, when it's activated, feels very chaotic. You walk in, if you're not used to it, there's everyone's talking at once, phones are ringing everywhere, and people are wearing different colored vests, sitting at different tables. And if you're not understanding and haven't been in that environment before, it looks very confusing. There is a true system and a, a method to the madness, if you would want to call it that. Uh, it's called the planning P, and it's a way that you run an operational period, and there's meetings at established times during the day. The planning section does one thing, the operations section does another, logistics does another, finance and admin, and management is overall. And then, of course, there's public information. So all of this has a function and a role. And when you go in, you begin learning that and you just fall into that system and into that circle and every day starts to work and you're planning for the next day and the next operational period and you begin managing, managing an emergency. We rely on the people that have the institutional knowledge. People in our line of work have done this for, for decades and they have an institutional knowledge base that will help facilitate the new people coming into any assignment uh, a, a source where they can go to so that they too will know the proper procedures and policy and things that have worked in the past will work in the future. Use the Just-In-Time training series to learn the core responsibilities of working in an EOC. Communication and coordination with all levels of government as well as building relationships with key partners including government, nonprofit, community-based and private sector organizations information management so that pertinent data is tracked and reported for EOC situation status reports. Resource management to help fulfill requests that come in from field operations. And developing essential public information in coordination with the Public Information Officer and Joint Information Center. Throughout the Just-In-Time training series, you will be reminded of the necessity to incorporate planning for people with disabilities and others with access and functional needs. Well, if you're in a Just-In-Time situation, the first thing I would say to you is you, you got to find experts on access and functional needs who can help you make good decisions, but most importantly, help you get the resources um, that you're going to need um, to respond properly and thinking of the short and the long-term processes that you have to deal with. You will also learn about essential operational priorities based on specific time periods following an incident. How are you going to help us respond in the first 24, 36, 72 hours, and even into the 90 day area as you start to recover? These plans allow both the state and the Bay Area to look at the same sheet of music and move forward playing the same song. Most of all, from the Just-In-Time training series, you should take away a better understanding of what it is like to work in an emergency operations center. It's kind of the way you have to be in the EOC. You have to be in the moment, and you have to be constantly focused on what's happening at hand. If you're working in an emergency operations center, you, you can't think of it as being in a position. You, you're not filling a position, you're filling a role as, as, as a team. The Bay Area Regional Catastrophic Earthquake Plans are available on the Cal OES Coastal Region website and the Bay Area UASI website. 
If time allows, it may be helpful to watch all just-in-time training videos to learn more about the relationship between the functions in the EOC. What is cutting edge about the planning work that the Bay Area Uwasi has done is that we are crossing normal jurisdictional boundaries regarding sharing resources and information in order to save lives. Here in the San Francisco Bay Area, the regional plans are critical because the Bay Area is uh, a real collection of very strong and independent cities and counties. The regional plans help pull us together, unify our effort, and make it effective interface for both the state and the federal government to work with us on a major event. Additional resources that can help support you in your EOC role include the Regional Emergency Coordination Plan, the State of California Emergency Plan, the National Response Framework, as well as FEMA's Emergency Management Institute online independent studies. Remember to ask your EOC team for guidance. You just relax, you do have, you're gonna have a well-defined job. There are people there who are gonna tell you what you need to do and how to do it. And just don't, don't be overwhelmed by what you see and the, the situation.